let's start in chronological order here. The Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics starts off very exciting. Giannis going to the moon, outproducing everyone on the floor. He's an alien. Uh, and then from then on, I think it was a oof, 45 to 29 run up until the start of the fourth quarter for the Boston Celtics. And they just put this game away. The home court advantage is something that you got to play for in the regular season. And many thought that the Bucks did build some negative karma by trying to dodge the Brooklyn Nets in the first round. As a result, they land in a three seed and they had to go on the road for game seven. And as a result, the Celtics get a all-time role player game from some of their guys and managed to rain threes upon Milwaukee and, and walk out of there with a massive win and uh, a huge, huge moment for Tatum. I know the last time we talked was game six was just about to start. He had an all-time historic game and and he's really established himself and put himself on the map as a top five, top six guy in the league now. And, and a really fun series that didn't have the most climactic ending, but but still really fun. Max, thoughts? Yeah, uh, that game feels close compared to the game we're about to talk about. Giannis, it, it was almost like he burnt out too early. I, I think I remember mm-hmm. seeing a stat like 10 minutes through the first quarter that he had either scored or assisted every point for Milwaukee. And that kind of production is simply not sustainable, uh, as impressive as it was while it lasted. And a historic, ridiculous game for the Celtics role players, but won the Bucks handed them on a platter. Uh, Grant Williams taking 18 plus three point shots. I, I don't know what the final total was. And as far as I remember, none of them were poorly advised shots. They were pretty much all wide open catch and shoots, or at the very least, a uh, fake to. Um, get the defender to bite and then take his time setting up the three. They were all well-advised shots. And he, I mean, he knew coming into this game, what looks would be there for him this game. Cause they'd been there for them, him all series. And he's simply too good of a player on too good of a team with too good of teammates uh, to not hit those shots. I think, Of course, it goes without saying that this series would have been different with Chris Middleton in it. But just looking at that Bucks defensive strategy of, yeah, we're going to give up open looks to this team that can shoot the three ball pretty well and force players other than Brown and Tatum to make shots. That makes a lot of sense when you can push the pace offensively and set a scoring for them to match and the pressure builds. But when all of your offense comes through one player, um, you, it's just a recipe for disaster. Mike Budenholzer kind of notorious for not making adjustments. And I don't think that's the sort of change you can make on the fly. Like, okay, I'd throw out our whole defensive philosophy. Yeah. We're going to do something else now. Um Go. It worked some games in this series, so it it wasn't a complete disaster. But I, hindsight's twenty twenty. It just when I say it out loud, it sounds so stupid to me, and it's, it seems like a joke that they actually attempted it. Uh, credit where credits due, though. Like just that, not alone. The two other really big keys for the Celtics: one, Brown and Tatum had the games they needed to have. Uh, I think Jalen Brown, probably the bigger player in game seven than Jason Tatum, though Tim had a ridiculous start, especially with that three point shooting. I think he was four for four. I just thought Brown pushed the ball, attacked the basket consistently better and opened the floor up for the Celtics. And second, I, they didn't make him invisible, but they shut down Giannis as well as any team can uh, through the last three quarters. The Bucks got a bit of action off of him in Holiday running the pick and roll, uh, but they made him stagnant and Milwaukee unable to generate any other offense. So congratulations to the Celtics on stepping up in the moments that were provided to them. They needed to hit. Their biggest players were there. Their defense was fantastic. And I think the better team won this series. And 
is are probably going to go take the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, and and we'll get to that series preview. Uh, but you made a great point. Uh, Giannis, a guy who we didn't think could get tired, looked tired late in that series, and you don't blame him, right? No. He looked he looked gassed in the second round series against Brooklyn last year. That was an absolute bloodbath, um, and even more so with no Chris Middleton. It was his job to carry this team night after night. And you could just see it near the end. He settled a little bit more for the jump shot and he missed some very uncharacteristic layups. He missed about yeah. three or four layups, which is which you never see. And so Boston did a remarkable job on that. I think the cost of that is I would very heavily favor Miami in game one. Um, we've just seen it in the past where you come off of this huge seven game, emotional, physically draining war, and you step right in on the road, especially to a Miami team. That's definitely a little fresher. If not, they do have their injuries, but just, it's so tough to come back from that. And so I could see Boston very well giving up game one. And if they don't, then that is a really bad sign for Miami. Um, they, they really need to win this first one. And then, in this modern NBA, you choose, right? With everyone on the floor being able to shoot nowadays, you basically choose the guy, the fifth guy who you're willing to give up the shots. And that was Grant Williams, who made a game seven tying record, seven threes. And that was Derek White, who made two big threes late in the third uh, to just keep propelling Boston in the right direction and building their momentum. And um, there's the, like, you can't, plan a defense to take away everything you have to give up something and the thing that they gave up burnt them in game seven and if you're milwaukee you, you actually as much as it sucks um it, it's kind of what you drew up and you live with grant williams taking 18 threes he just ended up knocking a bunch of them down and and you go home and you regroup hopefully with middleton there's not much movement that this team can necessarily do. You saw Grayson Allen and Pat Connaughton struggling to defend at times in this series. So maybe you're looking for one more wing defender. PJ Tucker was a big piece that they lost this off season, and it's going to be difficult for them to replace that. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated to see the moves that Milwaukee makes because they got to continue to push with Giannis being the best player in the world right now. Yeah. They'll always be a contender just with him and really go as far as he can take them and they just have to put the right pieces. I just quibble a bit with your point about the defense. I think you can choose to give up a lot less than the Bucks chose to give up. And part of that choice is how much Lopez is on the floor and what he's doing. And offensively, he kept them in this game. The Celtics might have run away with it a lot quicker than they did if he hadn't had the second chance points and just been the bully in the paint that the size advantage he has lets him be. But um, defensively, just some embarrassing three-second calls against him. And um, I, I don't know. I, I think the Celtics team just as shoots the ball too well, like one through eight for that kind of defensive strategy. I, I think Grant Williams, that was a poor choice. And uh, yeah. Well, we move on here to the Eastern Conference Finals. I am picking the Boston Celtics in seven games, even despite them most likely giving up this game one because of the fact that Tatum has taken this big leap. A Tatum versus Butler is, I'd say, pretty uh, counterbalanced, and, and they are going to equal each other out. I just think Boston's defense um, and their optionality to be able to go to a guy like Jalen Brown and and be able to go – and rely on an Al Horford. Rob Williams is going to have a much bigger impact in this series, having to defend a Bam Adebayo, having to defend um, whoever else that Miami's really going to throw out there. Uh, and and it just we said like the winner of this Boston Milwaukee series probably going to the finals, and they played a really tough physical series, and I just think they have more of the versatility to deal with Miami than any other team that Miami has encountered so far. Uh, really, really fascinating series though. A rematch of 2020 with very, two very different teams now. Yeah. I really haven't given 
much thought at all to either um, of the upcoming series for this Miami Celtics one. Um, I feel like the Heat are the type of team that raise and fall with their level based on their opponents, uh, that dog mentality kind of. And I, the 76ers, like that Embiid centric style of play, I think probably lulled Miami and this Celtics team will make them a better team. So I'm a little hesitant to like give, but like my gut was the Celtics having watched each team play, but you pointed out the Celtics might come out cold to start this series. And the more I think about it, the more I do expect to see this heat raise the level of play that they showed with the confidence they have from that series win coming back a few years uh, with this team just gets better as they keep playing and the, they're going to rise to the challenge. Uh, So uh, yeah, just to be the contrarian, I'll pick the heat.